Welcome back to Avenue Obscura, where we explore the unique, the strange, and the obscure. Today I wanted to do a quick movie review on a movie that is now streaming on Amazon Prime called You Should Have Left. Um, this movie was written and directed by David Kep, who is actually pretty famous for doing some really big name screenplays back in the 90s and 2000s. He did the screenplay for Jurassic Park and also the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Um, the story follows a couple, Kevin Bacon and Amanda Seyfried, and their daughter, Avery Essex. And it is, they play a family who wants to get away on vacation, so they end up finding a house to rent in Wales. The mother is a actress, and she's about to go away for an eight-week shoot, uh, for a movie, so they decide to spend some time together and get away from the stresses of life by taking this vacation. And predictably, when they get to the house, uh, chaos and terror and creepy things ensue. This movie is a Blumhouse production, and Blumhouse has been become really famous in the last couple of years by really taking low-budget horror movies and really amping them up. So really their formula is they give a director a couple million dollars and then they let them put their creative vision out on screen. This has worked out really, really well in some cases. Uh, Get Out was a Blumhouse production and Happy Death Day are some of the really good ones. There's some sort of middling movies like the Purge series, which they're kind of good and kind of bad. And then there's some really bad ones as well, such as The Gallows and Ouija. So the Blumhouse model has really become sort of very popular in the last few years. And uh, on this movie, I think it is somewhat of a detriment and somewhat of a positive as well, as I found this movie to have, it's, it's sort of a middle of the road movie for me. It had some things that I really, really enjoyed and had some things that I didn't enjoy so much. So I'm going to stay pretty spoiler free in this review, but as I said before, the story follows this family uh, that are taking a vacation in this really, really small town at this house that's very secluded out in Wales. Um, so as I said before, there are some really good things I liked about this movie and some things that I didn't like so much. So I figure I'll go over the things I liked first, the things that I didn't like, and then I'll let you know if I recommend this movie. Um, first of all, uh, the things that I liked, uh, I liked that the house looked very sort of modern, almost like an Ikea house, uh, very modern furniture, very modern insides. If you're used to seeing any kind of haunted house, haunted house movies, um, or creepy house movies where weird things happen, you're used to seeing dilapidated, dark, old looking houses. This is the total opposite. This house has a ton of light in it. This house, it looks super modern. And so it kind of flips that expectation that I think people have. And instead of relying on darkness and creepy atmosphere on that, uh, it actually relies on actual, you know, making sort of a, a atmosphere that doesn't rely on just visuals, which I thought was really unique. And, and I sort of liked that. Uh, then the second thing that I really liked about it was the child actor is actually pretty talented. It, as you know, a lot of times kid actors can be very annoying and it's generally because they're so young, they haven't had time to work on their craft yet, so they're just inexperienced. And a really bad kid actor, especially one that's in the movie as much as this little actress is, it could be a really detriment to this movie if, but she handles the role well, and I think she's really good and she's very convincing in the role. Um, the other thing that I liked was overall, I thought the story was good. It wasn't super unique, but at the same time, it had a little, little minor twists in there that, that kept it fresh and kind of kept me guessing throughout most of the movie. Now, things that I didn't like. So, one thing that I didn't like was the character development. I feel like I would have liked to see 
more character development on Kevin Bacon's character, who is really the protagonist of the whole movie. Yet I feel that you didn't really get to know much about his character. Little bits and pieces here and there that are, that are dropped, but not a whole lot. And this could be contributed by the fact that I read somewhere that in this movie he was supposed to have a uh, an occupation of a screenwriter, but that ended up getting cut from the film, and I'm not sure why, but maybe that portion being cut cut out some of his development in the role. Um, not sure, but I would have liked to know more about him. Um, the other thing I didn't care for as much was the pacing of probably the first 45 minutes or so. It started out slow. Not a whole bunch happens at first. And I felt like they could have, that's where we could have gotten some more information about the couple as a whole. We get little bits and pieces, but I would have liked to see something expanded. And whereas there's little creepy moments here and there throughout the first 45 minutes, the big kind of scary pieces don't really start happening until about the 45 minute to one hour mark. So I would have liked to see the pacing uh, picked up just a little bit. The last thing I didn't really care for was a, probably about, a, about at that 45 minute mark, there was a revelation about one of the characters that sort of sent the movie to the rest of its direction that it went down. And I felt like that revelation sort of came out of left field. There might have been little hints peppered throughout the beginning, but it sort of just it came out and this revelation about this character and then, oh, okay, uh, didn't necessarily see that one coming. Um, but I felt like the screenplay put that in to sort of get that character to leave for, temporarily leave the movie so that the rest of the plot could go forward. And I think they probably could have gotten the plot to move forward in a little bit smarter of a direction. That all being said, overall, I will say that I enjoyed this movie. Um, it, does it go up there with Blumhouse's best? Uh, definitely not. But it's definitely not down at the worst either. It, it's kind of in the middle range right around where the Purge movies on are. Very enjoyable, uh, really cool, unique visuals. Um, but there, it suffers from some story and plot developments that feel a little bit forced and felt like it could have been handled a little bit better. Now, would I recommend watching this movie? I would say currently, definitely yes. And the reason why I say that is, well, we don't really have a lot of movies coming out, period, right now. So it was nice to see a creepy movie that was interesting, Although suffering from some minor, you know, grievances, it kept my attention the whole time. You can uh, rent it on Amazon Prime. It's twenty dollars, so it's a little bit steep. But hey, let's face it, that's cheaper than if you and one other person just went to the movie theater uh, at, on a Friday night to watch a movie. So uh, overall, I definitely would say I recommend it. And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing as well. And also let me know what you thought of the movie in the comments. Did you like it? Would you recommend it? Just to let you know, I am going to be starting to review a few more movies and TV shows, especially new movies as they start coming out. But our next review is actually going to be for Creepshow, the 2019 series Creepshow. Also, please follow us on our socials at Avenue Obscura at Instagram is our main social currently. We put out a lot of really unique concepts and really cool visuals there. Thanks and we'll see you next time.